So for the purpose of evaluation, anything that's on the left is going to be, we'll call it A for now, and anything on the right will be B. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull apart these results and take a look to see what our planets look like. Okay, so this thing clearly is not playing ball. This is going to take me a second to get this one out. First off on the peas, let's take a look at the uh, roots and then I'll readjust the plants so we can take a look at the uh, top and the green growth as well. So in the case of the peas here, the winter field peas, it looks to me like the right has a small advantage. There's a little bit more root length and uh, there's also a little bit more mass in the midsection here. On the green growth here, it looks like the left side is a little bit taller, but there's definitely more going on down here. You can see there's some early branching of the plant growth, and there's definitely much wider and more green growth at the base, as opposed to the one on the left side. So to me, the first two look pretty equal, and uh, root health is looking great on both as well, so uh, it's a tough Tough call to choose a winner on this one. If I had to pick, I'd probably say the right side on uh, the first plant. All right, on to the next one. That's going to be the tomatoes. Now, this is the one that kind of surprised me the most. There's a little bit of a surprise coming up later on in the video uh, about the tomato plants. And this one caught me off guard. I was not expecting. But let's pull those out and uh, compare the plants. As we can see here, the roots on the left side absolutely dominate the uh, tomato on the right side. Looking at the greens, it's no surprise to see the uh, results of the greens are the same way. This is a clear winner left side for me. All right, so the last one on the list is going to be the uh, daikon radishes, which is always kind of my staple go-to for benchmarking anything. Let's uh, pull them out and uh, do a side by side. All right, so first off, here's the root results. These are clearly whiter, and I hope it shows up on the video the same way as it shows up uh, in real life. A little bit of yellowing and discoloration on this side here for the roots. As far as the greens, we have a clear winner on the left side here. Definitely bigger greens than on the right. Now the great thing about daikon radishes here is we can actually pull those roots apart and see what the uh, bigger root growth is, which is ultimately the fruit that you eat. All right, so I've pulled the uh, roots out. I did not see this one coming. So the biggest daikon radish here is actually this guy, slightly bigger than this one, this dude over here. And these two are very, very close to the same size, the two outside ones. But uh, I'll move them closer so you guys can see it as well. So if the goal is fruit, the uh, right side is clearly a winner here. I did not expect that one. To me, it looked like the left side was the complete winner here. So I guess this is good news, I think. Um, maybe. I did learn something about tomatoes here that I wasn't expecting to learn. So the left side, which was Michael's, and the right side, which was Great White, by the way. The left side uh, germinated the tomato plants way better. Like, way better, and you'll see it coming up in the slow motion video here in just a minute. But I actually had to replant the tomatoes in the Great White twice to get them to grow, and I'm surprised I even got anything to germinate. For whatever reason, same seeds, same packet, and uh, a bunch thrown into each, the Mycos germinated the tomatoes way better. The other plants, you guys can take the verdict however you want it and make your own decision on what you think is best or what do you think uh, performed the best here. But uh, the daikon radish caught me off guard. The peas, I thought the peas were going to be uh, really favoring the mycos, and it looks like they're much more even than I thought they were going to be. So the mycos not only germinated the tomato plants way better, but as far as nutrient uh, deficiency goes, the ones in the gray white don't even look healthy. They don't look right. I mean, uh, there's a lot of purple. It looks like nutrient deficiency, and they've got exactly the same nutrient mix. Anyway, food for thought for me for, uh, I've been struggling with uh, tomato plants in the Dutch bucket grill behind us over there for quite some time and Great White has been my product of choice or Orca. I'm wondering now if I should be maybe taking a look at Mycos to grow vegetables better. Not entirely sure. The greens and the root growth on the daikon radish also has me wondering if I would have given this experiment a little bit more time if the uh, Mycos would have come ahead 
come out ahead. Stuff to think about, maybe it needs further testing. Um, I'm gonna take a look at the nutrients and the parts per million left in the pails there as well as the pH and see if I can give us some clues as to what's going on. Oh, before I do that though, uh, I'll show you guys how I put this whole experiment together here. I got a little bit of a montage. Uh, I've also got the uh, growth footage where you can see about halfway through, uh, maybe it's before halfway. Anyway, you'll see the tomatoes on the right side struggling and nothing's germinating while the left side with the mycos is absolutely kicking the butt of the great white. So uh, take a look at that. Um, right after that footage is done, I'll snip in the uh, clip of the evaluation of the uh, nutrient solution and the part per million and maybe we can get to the bottom of this and find out some more information. So the finishing PPM is 29 on the mycos and 39 on the great white. That's pretty substantial more nutrient consumption, but not surprising because the tomatoes did so much better in the left side. I'm kind of wondering now if the PPM was higher, if the daikon radishes wouldn't have grown a whole heck of a lot bigger. This experiment might need repeating in some kind of variation. Let's go ahead and see what the pH is just out of curiosity. So the pH of the mycos is Pretty much bang on six, exactly where we want to see it. So that's a good sign. Let's see what great white looks like. All right, so there's the pH for the great white. Definitely looks really good as well, right on 6.0. So pH, no problem. So this was definitely a pleasant slash uh, surprise for me, this experiment. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with the mycos. I gotta say, uh, I'm gonna have to do some more testing there to see exactly how well that one performs under different circumstances. 
What I really am encouraged to see is that the uh, PPM or the nutrient uptake was quite a bit higher on the uh, mycos than it was on the great white. Now I don't know if that pertains directly to the germination rate because the tomatoes just didn't come up with the great white. Now of course the price breakdown isn't going to be simple to calculate. Although this bag and uh, the four ounce container of great white are about the same price, you need an absolute fraction of great white to uh, do the same application rate. So for 10 gallons, uh, to cover 10 gallons using the Myco here, it says you need a half cup of this. And I'm gonna say ballpark, there's probably about a cup and a half in this bag, and that's about a retail of about 30 bucks. So the four ounce container, which is half the size of this, uh, retails for also about 30 bucks. And that application rate also does 10 gallons of water. So bang for your buck uh, wise, this one is, uh, the Great White is actually much more economical than the Michaels. That being said, the application is much easier of the Michaels. It kind of comes in a little bit of a granular form. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. Oh yeah, there we go. So it's a little more granule, much easier to pick up and just dust where you want it. So I really like the application of the Michaels actually versus the Great White. It's very easy when you're not careful with the Great White to use way more than what you want to use. So you have to be much more careful to keep it within the constraints of what's on the label for application rates. And the application rates uh, for the Mycos is on the back. Both great products, both really good. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. Now, if there is something you want to go wrong with and screw up with, we do have that. <laughs> Just a little side rift over here, a little side tangent. If you use this, have used it, ever want to use it, let me just save you the trouble. Don't. Uh, I have found just about everything is better and superior in every way uh, than Recharge. I have yet to find a good way to use this. Maybe if I'm growing uh, some other crops, uh, this works for that. But for anything I've tried to grow, this has been a waste of money. It's For me, it's just been junk. So I give both of these a thumbs up. I don't think you can go wrong with either or. This one needs further testing. I think there's potential here, um, especially for tomatoes. It's clearly kicking butt over the great weight on tomatoes. I don't know, needs more testing, can't come to a conclusive answer for me. You guys watch the video, make up your own mind with what you think. Hopefully I've included enough information for you that you can make an educated decision. I don't know, food for thought, lots to think about here. Let me know in the uh, comments below what you guys think about this experiment or how I could repeat or maybe change this experiment to get a more conclusive result because I feel like there's still a little bit of gray area here. The next video up for testing is going to be this little guy. We're gonna try rapid start out by uh, General Hydroponics and see how this stuff works. Uh, as far as comparison as to what to uh, put it against, I think we might give Mycos another shot here and see how that turns out. Stay tuned for that one.